Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Rye Free Reading Room Tales for Tots program. My name is Granny Jean, and I'm hoping that we'll all have a good time together. Caregivers, mommies and daddies will stay with us to help um, um, give this uh, program uh, some uh, um, additional value. And actually, it's, it's probably one of the best things that can, uh, can happen, uh, that you learn these rhymes with your children, but also encourage them and interact with them. So here we go, okay? The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. For your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Absolutely, absolutely. What a gorgeous day out today. I know that today is not the day you're seeing this, but it's a beautiful day. And I have a little creek out in the back of my yard. And years ago, we used to take a rowboat and row down to the marina and back before the high tide uh, left and we didn't have any water to come back on. So it became low tide. So there wasn't any water. So anyway, we had to row down and row back before um, all the water left the creek. So here we go. Get in your rowboat. Put on your life vest. Oh, yeah. And it's a good idea to wear a hat. What do you think? I have a sailor hat. Yeah, this is a sailor hat. There we go. Now, rowing doesn't have a motor that we know, but we're the motor. We're the ones that make it go. It has two long poles with paddles on the end. They're flat pieces of wood, and that pushes the boat along. So here we go. Oh, it's hard work. So here we go. Are you ready? Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Bye, that was pretty good, right? And no, when you're in the boat, you don't stand up. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. You sit very quietly and sit in the middle so it doesn't tip over, right? So here we go. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Uh-oh, the tide's going out. We'd better hurry up and get back home. Yeah, we might not have any water left. So turn your boat around. This is how we do it. Move those paddles from different directions and there we're facing back up. So it's gonna be a little bit harder to go up the stream because all the water's coming down. So row, row, row your boat gently up the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Well, it's a beautiful day, and so life is pretty special, absolutely. And way over on the other side of the world, where we're waiting for spring to really sprout, they're waiting for fall, right? They've already had their spring and summer. And there's a little bird there. What do we say this bird was? Huh? A kookaburra? And his song is what? Oh, doesn't work anymore? Oh dear. Oh, come on. Well, his song is like a laugh. Ha 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 ha. Can you say that? Huh? Ha 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 ha. Kookaburra. And he's about this size. And he's awful cute. Yeah, I think he is too. And he has his song is so funny. Kookaburra sits in the old gum tree. Merry, merry king of the bushes he. Love, kookaburra, love, kookaburra, gay your life must be. Kookaburra sits in the old gum tree, eating all the gum drops he can see. Stop, kookaburra, stop, kookaburra, please leave some for me. Kookaburra sits in the old gum tree, counting all the monkeys he can see. Stop, kookaburra, stop, kookaburra, that's not a monkey, that's me. <laughs> oh, come on, let's, let's all sing it. And uh, can you clap his name? Kookaburra. Can you say that? Kookaburra. Kookaburra sits in the old gum tree. Merry, merry king of the bushes he. Love, kookaburra, love. Kookaburra gay, your life must be. Kookaburra sits in the old gum tree. Uh, eating all the gum drops he can see. Stop. Kookaburra, stop. Kookaburra, please leave some for me. 
Kookaburra sits in the old gum tree, counting all the monkeys he can see. Stop, kookaburra, stop. Kookaburra, that's not a monkey, that's me. My gracious. Well, before we have our first book today, Wizzy Wizard has a great tip for mommies and, and uh, <coughs> caregivers. So here we go. Clapping names helps children divide, hear words divided into parts like I did kookaburra just then. Uh, and this fun activity <coughs> helps develop their phonological awareness. Breaking words into parts. This is one of the, <coughs> one of the skills researchers say is important for children to be able to learn to read. So anyway, that's, that's Wizzy Wizard with a good tip for the week. Well now, <coughs> animals are starting to wake up. I see the raccoon has been <laughs> washing his dinner in my bird bath. <laughs> so he's awake out of his burrow. And this one is Bear Once More. And this is by Karma Wilson. Now we met Bear a few weeks ago when he was sleeping in his, his winter den and, and all his friends had a party, right? Remember that? Well, here we go. Bear Once More. And look at that lovely springtime in the, in the forest. Look at that. And I see the old bear is, is in his den, still sleeping. Ah, I think I see some daffodils. Do you see the daffodils, huh? Oh. When springtime comes in his warm winter den, a bear wakes up very hungry and thin. Well, he's not fat anymore, right? <coughs> he, ha <coughs> he hasn't had anything to eat <coughs> in quite a few months, right? <coughs> he waddles outside and roots all around. He digs and his paws fresh shoots from the ground. He nibbles on his lawn all the... <coughs> till the last blade is gone, but the bear wants more. Boy, my voice has gotten very berry, hasn't it? Excuse me. <coughs> there we go. <clears throat> mouse scampers by with his acorn pail. Come along, mouse squeals to Strawberry Vale. So up mouse hops onto bear's high back. And they tramp through the woods for a fresh fruit snack. Now, wild strawberries are only tiny. Oh, they're delicious though when they're when they're um, fresh. But uh, <clears throat> the berries grow sweet, and they eat, eat, eat. But the bear wants more. You see how tiny they are? <laughs> see those little red dots? Those are the strawberries, the wild strawberries. I have some in my grasp. Mm. Those noon sun glows when a long hops hair. <clears throat> Good day, friend mouse. How do, friend bear? I'm hungry, roars bear. Hare says, follow me. There's a fresh clover patch by the cottonwood tree. Look at that. Well, bear has had quite a lot to eat, but not enough, not enough. They nibble on their lunch with a crunch, 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 but bear wants more. <clears throat> Badger shuffles by with his new fishing pole. There's a fine fish feast at the old fishing hole. They head to the pond and they sit by the shore. Bear catches fish. Now you help me with this one. But he still wants more. Look at that. They bake. <clears throat> Meanwhile, back at the big bear's den with go wait gopher and mole with raven and wren. There they are. What are they gonna do? <gasps> they bake honey cakes, they decorate the lair. 
It's a springtime party for their good friend bear. Look at that. And bear rubs on his tummy. Ah, he smells something yummy. And he still wants more. Oh, what's going on? He smells something cooking. Huh. Bear sniffs and he snuffles as a sweet breeze blows. He romps to his home. He follows his nose. His friends yell surprise when he gets to his den. But Bear is so big. Now that he's eaten all day, he's gotten fat again. Huh? I think so, too fat. <laughs> but he can't fit in. Bear wails, what luck. I am stuck, stuck, stuck in my own front door. Look at that. He's, here's his rear end out in the field. And here's his head in here. And he's stuck in his door. He's too fat. <laughs> well, mouse squeals, poor bear. He is wedged too tight. Hair tugs, raven pushes with all of their might. Badger gets a stick. And he pries so hard. Look at that. He's, he put a stick in to pry the bear out. <laughs> oh, poor bear. And bear pops out and he lands in his yard. Since bear is so wide, they party outside and he still wants more. <laughs> That's what happens when you eat too much. You still, you don't know when to stop, huh? Well, Bear opens presents. He gobbles honey cakes. He eats so much that his big tummy aches. Look at that, all his friends are giving him a party. Bears eat pretty fast, you know. He snuggles in the grass and he snores, big snores. He is full, full, full but his friends want more. Oh, oh, my goodness, they didn't leave enough. He didn't leave enough for his friends. They had some, I'm sure. <clears throat> well, that's too bad. Well, <clears throat> maybe the next day, it being spring, it, it might have been raining. This is a rain stick. It's a gourd with seeds inside. It sound like rain, yeah. It's raining, it's pouring, the old man is snoring, bumped his head on his bed and couldn't get up in the morning. Yeah, you want to sing that with me? It's raining, it's pouring, the old man is snoring, bumped his head on his bed and couldn't get up in the morning. Yeah, we need, the, we need the rain, right? To make the flowers. Sure we do. But hey, it's still springtime, and spring can be pretty, pretty surprising. Ah, what do we say about the north wind? Ooh, the north wind does blow, and we could get snow. And what will poor Robin do then? Poor thing. He'll sit in the barn keep himself warm, and tuck his head under his wing. Poor thing. So see if you can do that with me, can you? <whistles> Pretend you're blowing with me. Ooh. Ooh. The north wind does blow, and we could get snow. And what will poor Robin do then, poor thing? <whistles> He'll sit in the barn. Keep himself warm and tuck his head under his wing. Poor thing. That's how he keeps, that's how he sleeps too. Yeah. <clears throat> but, <clears throat> well, <clears throat> pretty soon when we go <clears throat> out in the, in the <clears throat> near a pond, we might see a mother duck and her little ducks might have, you know, in a month or two might have hatched. Now they're pretty, these mother ducks are very, 
very <clears throat> uh, careful of their ducks. They want to make sure that they are all safe. And here she is. And I wonder how many ducks she has. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight ducks. Wow. Have you seen my duckling by Nancy Tafori? And this is a, a Caldecott book. <clears throat> and here they are in a nest by the reeds on the shore. But I see one little duck, sees a butterfly. And what is he doing? Uh, she's what? She's climbing out of the desk, nest before mommy comes. Uh-oh. So if one's gone, she doesn't have eight anymore, does she? Early one morning. There she goes. Ah, what happened? Mom comes and sees her babies. But does she see the other baby over there on the other side of that little island chasing that butterfly? But she knows he's missing. She's counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Where's eight? You see eight? I see, I see eight over there. But mama doesn't, right? Let's go find your, your sister. And off they go, mama duck and all her ducklings behind her. And there's the last one that comes out of the nest to follow. And they'd have to go find her. Can you see where she is? Huh? I see her way up at the top here. <laughs> mama doesn't know she's there, does she? Ah. Have you seen my duckling? Mama asks the uh, little blue heron. Oh no, I haven't. And Mama sees the turtle. Have you seen my duckling? Oh my, I don't see her either, do you? I wonder where she is. She must be there, I see the, I see the butterfly. Ah, I see her behind the tree. Do you? She's there, but no one sees her. Now, here's an animal that the mama sees. Do you know what that is, huh? That's a beaver. Have you seen my, my duckling? Says mama. No, says the beaver. Ah, but we see her hiding behind the rock, right? And they all dip their heads under the water and ask the fish and the salamander and the little uh, crayfish, have you seen my duck wings? She asked the frog, but who's up here on the other side of the weeds? The duckling that they're looking for, yes. Oh, she sees a mama merganser and her babies. Have you seen my duckling? No, I'm sorry, I haven't, she says. Oh, I think I see her under the pier. Do you see her? She's still looking for that butterfly. You see the butterfly on top of the pier? Yeah. I do. I skipped the page. I'm sorry. <clears throat> well, look who's coming. Look who found my duckling. What is that little creature? That's a turtle. That's a, yeah, that's a water turtle, a pond turtle. Yeah. Come on. Your mommy's looking for you, says the pond turtle, and brings that baby to the mama. And now the mama has all her babies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I think he still is looking at that butterfly. Uh-oh. 
Hope this doesn't take off again. Hmm. Come along now. No, nope, we're all going to stay together, says Mama. Oh, Mama's learned her lesson. Come on. What on earth? They all go back to the nest. It's nighttime. Oh my, she was gone almost the whole day. Wow. And there they are, all snug under Mama's wings, keeping nice and warm and safe. And there's the bullfrog. Boom. Um, um, singing them to sleep, I think. Yeah. Have you seen my duckling by Nancy Tefori? <clears throat> well, I'll tell you what, when it rains out, sometimes it's kind of fun, especially for robins. Now, why would robins like the rain? Well, guess who else likes the rain? The little worm that's underground. And that little worm knows it's raining, so it'll come up to the top to get some water. That little worm needs the water. Yeah. So Robin knows that. And so he runs along in the garden and then he stops and he listens. And then he hears the worm under the ground and he digs down and catches his supper. Yes, he does. So here he is. Here's a song. Robin in the rain, what a saucy fellow. Robin in the rain, mind your socks of yellow. Digging it, running in the garden on your nimble feet. Digging for your dinner with your long, strong beak. Robin in the rain, you don't mind the weather. Showers always make you gay. But the worms are wishing that you would stay at home. Robin on a rainy day. Robin on a rainy day. Yeah. Absolutely. Come on, sing that with me. Robin in the rain, what a saucy fellow. Robin in the rain, mind your socks of yellow. The yellow socks. <clears throat> Running in the garden on your nimble feet. Digging for your dinner with your long, strong beak. My Robin in the rain, you don't mind the weather. Showers always make you gay. But the worms are wishing that you would stay at home. Robin on a rainy day. Robin on a rainy day. Don't get your feet wet. Robin on a rainy day. Yeah. March winds. Boy, that was a big wind the other day, wasn't it? Woo. Woo. March winds and April showers. Yeah, April's around the corner. In fact, I think we're in April, right? When this program, yeah. The month of April, bring along the May flowers. So March is over. That was the first day of uh, spring was in March. Now April's the first full month of springtime, right? When everything really starts to blossom. So here we go. March winds and April showers bring forth the May flowers, right? Well, what do we have here? Well, we have flowers that are blooming right now. Not in, we don't have to wait till May. Daffy Down Dilly has come to our town in her yellow petticoat and pretty green gown. That's a daffodil. That's a daffodil. That's one of the early spring flowers. Daffy Down Dilly has come to our town in her yellow pelly petticoat and pretty green gown. Right, right. Those are her leaves. And and the little, the little poem is as if she were a little girl. Right, a petticoat. Petticoat would be a furry thing that she would wear as a skirt. Right under her other skirt. Well, how do dinosaurs say good night? <laughs> do, do mommy and daddy think you're a dinosaur sometimes, huh? Oh, do they ever say that? Well, this is by J Jane Yolen. How do dinosaurs say good night? I don't know. And this book. <laughs> 
I've read this book several times, but I never noticed that on the beds is the name of the dinosaur that she draws here. Isn't that funny? Tyrannosaurus Rex. <laughs> How does a dinosaur say good night when mama comes in to turn out the light? Oh, sorry. <laughs> when papa comes in to turn out the light. Ever be playing and, and then as they say, it's time for bed and you don't want to go to bed and you act like a dinosaur? Mm, let's see. Does a dinosaur slam his tail and pout? Hmm. You don't do that, right? No. Does he throw his teddy bear all about? No, you don't do that. No. Does a dinosaur stomp his feet on the floor and shout, I want to hear one story more? Or one book more, right? Yeah. Mama. No. Does a dinosaur roar? I don't want to go to bed. No. How does a dinosaur say goodnight when mama comes in to turn out the light? Does he swing his neck from side to side? Does he up and demand a piggyback ride? <laughs> Does he moan? Does he moan? <laughs> Does he soak? Does he sigh? <sighs> <laughs> I don't want to go to bed. Does he fall on top of his covers and cry? <laughs> no, dinosaurs don't. They don't even try. They give a big kiss. They turn out the light. He's turning it out with his tail. They tuck in their tails. They whisper good night. They give a big hug and a give a one kiss more. Good night. Good night, little dinosaur. <laughs> That's what dinosaurs do. So if you pretend to be a dinosaur, remember, they go to bed very, very well. Yes, yes, they mind their, their mothers and their daddies. Wow. <clears throat> what did I do with, there we go. Well, here we go. We have five little dinosaurs jumping on the bed. Now, jumping on the bed is very dangerous. And how do I know that? Because when I was four years old, I jumped on the bed and I cracked my head right across here because I landed on the edge of the bed frame. And it wasn't a very pretty sight, I don't think. <laughs> so it's dangerous. Five little dinosaurs jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more dinosaurs jumping on the bed. Four little dinosaurs jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more <laughs> dinosaurs jumping on the bed. Three little dinosaurs jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more dinosaurs jumping on the bed. Two little dinosaurs jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, 
no more dinosaurs jumping on the bed. One little dinosaur jumping on the bed. He fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more dinosaurs jumping on the bed. No more dinosaurs jumping on the bed because it's dangerous, right? Yeah, be careful, be careful. Well, I think it's time for our bye-bye song. So bye-bye to the kookaburra. Can you clap kookaburra? Bye-bye to kookaburra. Bye-bye to the robin too, robin. And bye-bye to Granny Jean, Granny Jean. It's time to say goodbye. And goodbye to all my friends, just friends. And goodbye to the mummies and mommies and daddies. And goodbye to Mr. Robin. It's time to say goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs>